I really want to just talk about why independent agencies matter. And not just to people who work for independent agencies, but people who work for network agencies, for marketing clients, for the media, and for everybody that's involved in our business. And I'd like to start mischievously uh, by quoting um, somebody who absolutely does not work for an independent agency, uh, but works for one of the best and most successful holding companies, Maurice Levy. Um, Publicis, you may have read, just changed its constitution uh, so Maurice can stay on in charge until he is 75. Um, so many years to go for Maurice. But this is what he was saying a couple of years ago, uh, quoted in campaign. He said, you know, there's bound to be an impact from the recession and the economic crisis on the number of entrepreneurs doing agency startups. In the 70s, everybody was doing it. In the 80s, not so many. In the 90s, even less. And since 2000, almost none and there's no likelihood of that changing. Well, he's a great man, but he is really wrong on that one. Um, and we're going to prove that to you today with some absolutely fantastic examples of people who have started agencies relatively recently and build a big success. Um, we, the independents, uh, tend to be a little bit on the fringe. Quite interesting if you look at the way that the uh, Cannes Lions people have set the seminar program out, uh, the middle chunk uh, is very much the holding companies, WPP, the IPGs, the Publicis, and the independents, the yellow people, are Sunday and uh, Friday night and Saturday. Um, so, okay, you know, we're a little bit left field. We look in a little bit at the big corporate guys, uh, but we do so with a perspective that hopefully is going to be interesting to everybody. And it's maybe just worth noting at this point, you know, none of us has an inside track on who's going to win awards at this festival, but last year, the independent agencies won more Grand Prix uh, than WPP, uh, Publicis, Havas, and Interpublic put together. So, in a way, the independents are the people where the new ideas are coming from. And it's not just us saying that. You know, if we look at what's happened in the past year, if you look at the US, uh, first time in living memory, the two agencies of the year, creative agency and media agency of the year, are both independently owned, privately owned, owner-managed agencies. Big ones, but still independent. Um, we're Elephant from Cairo. Um, obviously, Cairo's had a big year this year. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've heard. Um, a lot of things came out of um, um, the revolution. Um, and I could go on talking about that, but I think uh, I'm here to talk about this, which is how to make clients uncomfortable and do good work. One is don't be afraid to have fun and try new things. I think this industry is becoming less and less fun as we go along. Um, I remember coming to Cannes in 2003, and just the spirit of the festival here was a lot funner back then. Uh, today, it's um, a lot of talk about digital and social media, and every seminar starts to sound the same. I'm not saying digital is uh, uh, wrong. Obviously, digital is the future, but digital is old. Um, Chris Porter did subservient chicken in 2004, which is nine years ago. So we need to think about that. Uh, I think the, the festival needs to move on to more fun things, and we need to see things happening on stage. Advertising is not rocket science. And again, that's something we tend to forget. Um, I looked this up. This is the um, list of um, jobs by importance on this website. And uh, advertising executive is somewhere between telephone repair and waitress. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think that's something to keep in mind. I mean, the, the, the people I meet in advertising that are doing great work are the people that take it uh, um, as a fun job and, and, and don't take it seriously. Um, because again, very few consumers today are willing to believe that you can change their lives. And so as brands, I think we need to stop saying that and uh, need to talk down with them and not talk down to them. Um, because most consumers are smarter than your average client. That's a, that's a fact. <laughs> and uh, in Egypt, we struggle a lot with that. When we present ideas, uh, clients always say, this is too creative, they won't get it. And uh, I think suddenly uh, this happened. And this uh, proved to the world that consumers are not stupid because consumers did this. And if they can do this, they can understand a stupid 30-second spot.
Um, obviously, the bad thing that came out of the revolution is we stopped working. Uh, no briefs for three months. And as an independent, you don't have salaries and you have to pay salaries. And that was tough. But I mean, what we learned from it is when you're not doing anything, try to go out and do something. And that's what we did. Uh, this is what happened uh, after the revolution. The number of Facebook users in Egypt quadrupled, or more than that, but that's all I know, quadrupled. It's like eight times, <laughs> Oct octalupled. Uh, <laughs> so we, wa we wanted to do something that, uh, and people started feeling really down after the revolution. The spirits were very low, and we wanted people to feel optimistic that things, you know, every, every revolution has a slump after it, and things will get better. So uh, Facebook made the revolution happen, and we wanted to do a tribute to the, to the Facebook and something positive. So we found the like button. We said, why don't we do something for the like button? And then we went to Coke, which is one of our biggest clients, and we sold them this idea. Can we have volume? It was like an endorsement, a validation that you've done something right or you're, you're going in the right direction.